My name is Luke, and welcome back to another Interbotics tutorial. Today, we're going to be taking a look at the Interbotics X Series ARM control package for ROS2. This package allows you to launch all of the necessary programs and load all necessary configurations to get started with the Interbotics X Series ARM platform. So, to start, we're going to be taking a look at the contents of this package, starting with the configurations. So inside of the configuration folder, you can see several different motor configuration and a single mode configuration file. These motor configurations, so we'll start with uh, the Widow X200 configuration file, which is this robot right here. Uh, these motor configurations contain all of the configurations that describe the layout of the motors and the different register values within those motors. So to start, we have the port, where we're specifying that it should look at the TTY DXL port for this robot. Uh, the joint order, so inside of uh, the arm, it goes waist, shoulder, elbow, wrist angle, wrist rotate, and gripper. Uh, the sleep positions, so corresponding to this joint order, uh, the positions when it is in the sleep position or a sleep configuration. Um, some configuration for the joint state publisher inside of the XS SDK. So it will publish at a rate of 100 hertz. It will publish the states and it will publish to the namespace joint states topic. We then specify different groups. Uh, so inside of this we only have one group which is the arm group. And that just goes waist, shoulder, elbow, wrist angle, and wrist rotate. And then we specify our grippers. We have one gripper in this robot, which is called gripper. Uh, and we specify different configurations for those. So the horn radius, the arm length, left finger name, and right finger name. And then we specify our shadows. So the shoulder joint will have a shadow servo, which is called shoulder shadow. And on startup of the X-Series SDK, it will calibrate the position of the shoulder to get it in line with the shoulder joint. So the shoulder shadow will share the same position as the shoulder if calibrate is set to true. There are no sisters in this robot, so we just leave that blank. And then we have the motors configurations. So here we specify the different registers and register values for each of the servos inside of the arm. So starting with waste, it has an ID of 1, a baud rate of 3, return delay time of 0, and so on. We do that for each of the servos that we specified at the beginning in joint order. And going back into the configurations, we're going to take a look at modes. So the modes YAML file, we specify the operating modes for the different groups and any single servos. So for example, the arm group is going to start in operating mode position, be time profile, and have a profile velocity of 2,000 milliseconds or 2 seconds, profile acceleration of 300 milliseconds or 0.3 seconds, and it will start with its torque enabled. The single servo mode configurations, we're going to configure the gripper servo to operate in mode PWM, and it is also going to start with its torque enabled. The demos folder contains the different APIs that we provide, or demonstrations of those different APIs. For now, we have the Python ROS2 and MATLAB ROS2 APIs. Those will be reviewed in a separate video. For the launch directory, we have the XSARM control launch Python file. And so this file, we have uh, several different launch arguments, which we'll review in a moment. But you can see inside of here that we include the X Series ARM description launch file. So XSARM description.launch.py that we talked about in the XSARM description video. And we also launch 
the XS SDK node from the Interbotics SS XS SDK package. And we provide these different launch arguments as parameters. Optionally, if we are using the use sim launch argument and set that to true, we can instead launch the XS SDK sim node, also from the Interbotics XS SDK package. So on our documentation website, under ROS2 open source packages, we have ARM control. We can see the different launch arguments under the usage section. So for example, you can specify the robot model, which will load the configurations for that specific robot. A robot name, if you want to name the robot something other than the robot model, say if you're using uh, two different robots and you want them to be namespaced differently. Use RViz, whether or not you want to load uh, RViz to visualize a robot. A motor configs and mode configs absolute file path. Those are set automatically through robot model. Uh, load configs, whether or not you want to load the information in the motor configs file on launch. So by default, this is set to true. Uh, this only needs to be done once per robot or robot configuration. Um, after the first launch, you can set this to false, and it'll let you know if it's still set to true. Um, this length lengthens the life of the servo's EEPROM, as well as shortening the startup time. Uh, use sim, as I talked about earlier, that will launch the simulation Dynamixel node. And then a few options to uh, configure the robot description parameter that was also talked about in the X Series ARM descriptions video. So now we're going to actually launch the package. So to start, we're going to be in our Interbotics workspace. We're going to source the setup.bash file and launch the package. So here, just a very simple launch command, ROS2 launch, interbotics xsarm control, xsarm control.launch.py, and we're only specifying the robot model. And everything loads up, and the robot is visualized in Arvis. So we're going to open a new terminal. Once again, sourcing the install setup.bash file. And we're just going to inspect the different ROS topics. <clears throat> so here you can see that we have the XS SDK is publishing its different joint states. So it's reading the position, velocity, and effort information from the servos and publishing those as a sensor messages joint states message to the joint states topic, which is being read by the robot state publisher, and that is publishing the robot description message. So along with what you saw in the RQT graph, there are also a couple of other important topics that we can take a look at. So if we do ROS2 topic list show types, we will see these three command topics. We have joint group, joint single, and joint trajectory. Joint group is of the joint group command type, and that can be used if you want to publish commands to a group, like the arm group. Joint single is of the type joint single command, and that's used if you want to publish a command to a single joint, like the gripper. And joint trajectory is of the type joint trajectory command, uh, that is a wrapper for the joint trajectory ROS topic, um, and that can be used to publish commands to uh, either a group or a single joint, and uh, a series of joint positions in corresponding times. And now we can take a look at the different services. So ROS2 service list. 
So we have a lot of high level or low level services for each of the different nodes, but we're going to look at a few specifically here that are advertised by the XS SDK. Um, specifically, get motor registers, get robot info, reboot motors, set motor PID gains, set motor registers, set operating modes, and torque enable. So get motor registers, calling that. So ROS2 service call. And that is going to be that type. So command type is group. The name is going to be arm. And then the register that we're going to look at is, say, present temperature. So in this service call, we are calling the WX200 Git Motor Registers service using the register values service type. We are looking at the arm group, and we are reading the present temperature register. So you can see that was a successful service call, and we got back the temperatures in Celsius of each of the servos in the ARM group, again specified by the joint order. Um, and now let's just set the robot to its home position so we can see a different one. And we're just going to do, or we're going to do that using the interbotics control panel. So I'll take, go to home pose. Ah, we have to select arm. There we go. And if you see from the side, it's not quite at a right angle, but the home position is truly at a right angle. So to fix that, we're going to set the elbow positional gain a little bit higher. So we can just... So ROS2 service call set motor registers, again with the register value service type, command type single, we're commanding the elbow this time, and the position P gain, and setting the value to 1500. And if you saw, it briefly jumped up, and now it is a lot closer to a right angle. All right, the next one that we're going to take a look at is uh, torque enable. So we're just going to call ROS2 service call WX200 torque enable. The torque enable service type. Command type is group. Name arm and enable is false. So this will make the robot torque off completely. There we go, that was that. And we'll just re-enable that. Okay, so here we used the set operating modes service using the operating mode service type. We are changing the arm group to mode position, profile type time, and profile velocity to a thousand. So here we kept everything the same, except for the profile velocity. So this is based on the, or this changes what was set by default using the modes configuration file. So if we go into Arvis and we just do go to home pose, you'll see that it moves a lot faster. So instead of every movement taking 2,000 milliseconds, it takes 1,000 milliseconds instead. And then the last service that we're going to look at is the get robot info service. So, so here we're calling the get robot info service using the robot info service type. We are going to get information about the arm group. We can see that it responds with a whole bunch of different information about the arm group, including its uh, operating mode, profile type, uh, the different names of the joints, along with their joint IDs, 
et cetera, et cetera. This is useful if you are building an application on top of the XS SDK. Uh, for example, in the Python ROS API, we use the uh, robot info service to build out things like uh, joint limits and how to read the joint states topic um, to get state information about the robot. Okay, and then the final part of the XSR control package is that simulated uh, Dynamixel driver that I talked about earlier. So to launch that, ROS2 launch, Interbotics XSARM control, XSARM control.launch.py, robot model is WX200, and here we are appending the use sim colon equals true argument, and that will launch that Dynamixel driver. You can see here, it's not energized, so it's not using the actual hardware, but the robot is indeed loaded. We get the same features as the normal uh, Dynamixel driver, except for a few uh, different things, like for example, you don't have effort information. So this is useful if you're just doing like a purely position-based application, and you want to test out your movements before running it on your real hardware. So we can still go to home pose, go to sleep pose. Uh, you can torque off different servos. This doesn't really do much. Uh, specifically, the one that actually works the best is operating modes, and you can set. So changing the arm group to 1,000 profile velocity. You can see here that it was updated. Set that, and that moves a lot faster. So that's it for this video. By the end of this tutorial, you should know how to use the X-Series ARM control package to launch all of the necessary drivers, programs, and configurations to use your Intibotics ARM.